Welcome to another episode of Graphic Man. Classics Illustrated produced comics from the early 1940s all the way through to 1971. Many titles were reprinted over and over again, sometimes over 20 times, and getting variant covers over the years. But for some reason, this issue, number 66, The Cloister and the Heart, only received one printing. Why did this issue not get reprinted years later alongside the rest of the entire catalog? Could there be a sinister reason for not continuing to reproduce this book? The Cloister and the Hearth was written by Charles Reed in the year 1861. Although the story itself is set in the 15th century, this Classics Illustrated line of comic books made their comic book version of the story in December of 1949. It's about a young man named Gerard who was skilled in the arts but was told that he was wasting his time because the family wanted him to become a priest. But one day Gerard met a woman named Margaret and he said, I've just got to marry her. And he makes the decision to not enter the priesthood. And of course, many people put obstacles in Gerard's way, even lying to him and telling him that his wife has died while he was doing business in another country. And so with his wife presumably dead, Gerard does finally join the priesthood which is what the people around him wanted. But years later, he finds out that his wife is alive and she's had their baby. But Gerard has made a vow to be a priest and he maintains being a priest and is not allowed to rejoin his wife, but he does financially help raise his son. And who was his son? Well, later, Charles Reed, who wrote this novel, admitted that he wanted to tell a story about the parents of Erasmus. And so he wrote this novel about the hardships that the parents of Erasmus had to overcome. And Erasmus, their son, did something that the Catholic institution did not like. He made the traditional Bible available to everybody. And once it was available to regular people, then Martin Luther grabbed it, and he translated it into the German language, which sparked the Protestant Reformation, so the German people could actually have a copy. And the Erasmus Greek text even made it over to England where William Tyndale got his hands on it and he started printing Bibles in English. The cat was out of the bag. And shortly after this issue was published, the Classics Illustrated line of comics was bought and purchased by Gilberton Publishing, which was a Catholic publishing company. And for some reason, they didn't see fit to ever reprint issue number 66 ever again. For example, if you find any Classics Illustrated book well after the mid-1950s and look at the back page to see how to order reprints, you'll see all the titles listed all the way up to issue number 169. But when you look for issue number 66, you won't find it as it's no longer available and they didn't bother to ever make any more. They also started dropping other titles later on as well for various reasons. So I'm not going to make too big a deal out of this. But it should be noted that there was another attempt to illustrate this story and it came 50 years before Classics Illustrated did. This is a poster from the year 1893 advertising the book Cloister and the Hearth, but this book came with 550 illustrations. I can't imagine how much a book would have cost back then with that many illustrations in it, but I'm sure it was a lot. I would like to show all of these illustrations. This channel is of course dedicated to good graphics after all, but unfortunately I don't have that book. The Library of Congress does. Classics Illustrated also had a line of comics for very young readers called Classics Junior. I recommend you get those for your young nieces and nephews. And if you are worried that the books would be too old and brittle and would tear easily in the hands of young readers who haven't learned yet how to handle 70 year old comics, then maybe you could get the much newer reprints that were reissued in 2003. These were reprinted in Canada and are slightly smaller, about one inch shorter than the original comics. Here's my copy of Classics Junior number 536 from March of 1957. Don't let that number 536 confuse you. 
There weren't over 500 of these titles made. For some reason, Gilberton Publishing started their junior series of books with issue number 501. I think they thought that would give them plenty of wiggle room if they ever wanted to add over 300 more titles to their more serious original run of books. The Classics Junior series were easy to read and didn't have too many words, just like today's modern comics, only with better moral subject matter. Excuse me, graphic man, but don't forget to mention that there's Jack Kirby artwork in issue number 35. Oh, that's right. Thank you, literature lad. Issue number 35 was the last days of Pompeii. Here's the line drawn cover. And here's the painted cover version. Here's some original Jack Kirby art from this issue. I believe this is page 10. Here's page 25. This is the bottom of page 25. And now we have page 30. And here finally is page 35. And to really make Literature Lad happy, here are some of our favorite covers. Well, that about wraps it up this time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, happy drawing.